Now that our data is stabilized, it's time to add textures from the capture to our stabilized data. We'll do this using a texture transfer stage. The first thing we'll have to do is add our texture stream back to the track. We'll create a new load asset stage directly below the first one and drag the A compression demo texture clip into the asset ID field. Create an interval, trim it, and align it with the rest of the clip. Texture transfer takes the existing textures from a textured stage and transfers it to the closest surface on the new mesh created in the previous stage. We'll create the texture transfer stage. Unlike other stages, this stage requires a reference to another stage in your track to use as the texture source. We'll click and drag the load asset stage containing our texture data into the source stage field in the composition window. Texture transfer is based off a property called cage extrusion. Measured from the surface of the mesh in the current stage, this is the distance from which rays will be cast to the source stage to transfer textures. If there is no surface of the source mesh within this distance in either direction, the texture transfer will not function for that portion of the surface, and junk texture data may be filled in instead. If there is another part of the mesh in the way of the intended surface, that part of the mesh will be captured instead, which can result in parts of the surface like the hair or arms being projected into the shoulders or side, and so on. We'll be turning off the first cage setting, Auto Cage Extrusion, for our first pass with texture transfer. Auto Cage Extrusion finds the furthest error distance between the source mesh and the current mesh in a given frame, which works great in most cases. However, because of the proximity of the actor's hair to her shoulder being less than some of the error distances in our clip, that would cause some issues for the texture transfer. Instead, we'll pick a value that we know will cover most of our errors and make adjustments as needed for the portions that still have problems. We checked most of our mesh using the 0.025 segment max error, and know that most of our clip fits inside of that range. So we'll change the parameters for our texture transfer to have auto cage disabled and set the cage extrusion value to 0.025. We can create an interval for the whole clip, save our composition as AC 6.1 texture transfer and execute the stage. After a quick review, we can see that the results are quite good. We have a few things that we're going to have to address, but overall, we can be pretty happy with these results. There are a few things left that we'll want to improve. We can do this by creating intervals around the remaining problems and adjusting our cage distance as necessary. On frames 38 to 41, the sleeve transfers into the front of the skirt. We'll create a new interval and bring the cage distance to 0.015 to help reduce unintended transfer. From frames 75 to 76, the right sleeve shows on the front of the skirt. Both frames are keyframes, so isolating them and running with auto cage extrusion will fix the problem, as they will be perfect matches to the stage that the textures are being transferred from. On frame 83, there's a spot of color on the back of the skirt. We'll create an interval to isolate this frame and increase the cage extrusion to 
On frame 111, there's an artifact on the underside of the skirt, but it's quite well hidden by the motion of the performer. Nevertheless, let's be sure to correct them. Let's stop reviewing the textures for a moment and try a few things on this frame to see how we can fix it. We'll isolate this frame and run again with a cage distance of 0.035 to see if we can get enough coverage for the skirt without affecting the close mesh of the neck and face. Unfortunately, looking at the result after running it, we can see that there is shoulder and neck texture visible on the actor's chin. It doesn't look like there's a middle ground that preserves the textures for both the skirt and the face. Let's jump back to our template match stage and create a single frame segment for frame 111. Because this is a single frame segment, there's nothing to actually stabilize, so you will see a no work to do pop up. Press OK and the job will finish immediately. Now that this frame is no longer in a segment, we can set the texture transfer to auto cage extrusion and rerun it to resolve the texture problem. We took a lot of steps in stabilization to review and try to mitigate problems like this that may occur in texture transfer. But having flexibility and going back and editing previous stages can sometimes be the most efficient way to correct errors. Similarly, frame 115 has a pretty large patch of texture problems under the left arm. It's pretty easy to tell we're going to have the same issue as frame 111 because of the position of the head. We'll take the same steps as before. Create an interval for this frame in template match and set the texture transfer stage to auto cage extrusion for this frame. On frame 123, a large patch on the back of the skirt is incorrectly textured. We'll create an interval for this frame and increase the cage extrusion to 0.03. Frame 131 has a quite noticeable bright spot on the back of the skirt. We will isolate that frame and change the cage distance to 0.03. From frames 150 to 180, the right hair flickers on the right shoulder. We're going to end up making a few intervals to accommodate this section, but first let's check for any more outstanding problems in these frames. On frame 158, under the left sleeve, you can see some of the textures crossing over incorrectly. We'll change the cage distance to 0.01 and see if that causes any problems. We'll run this single frame to see if it helps. We can see, unfortunately, that the mesh is just too close. We'll add a single frame to the template match stage and continue reviewing the other frames. On frame 175, there's a flicker on the back of the skirt we'll need to address. Let's try setting the cage distance for the single frame to 0.03 and run it. Looking at the results, we can see that the hair on the left shoulder is still quite obvious, and there's still a bit of flicker on the back of the skirt. Once again, we'll make a single frame in template match and run that. 
Now that we've reviewed frames 150 to 180, let's set up some intervals to correct the common issues. Let's start by adding an interval from frames 151 to 156. We'll set the cage extrusion of this new interval to 0.02. Next, frames 157 to 175 are almost exclusively single frame segments. We'll create an interval from frames 157 to 181 and set the interval for auto cage extrusion. On 194, there's another spot on the back and left side of the skirt. We'll isolate this frame and run with a cage distance of 0.035. Frame 203 has a deep well with poor texture transfer on the back of the skirt. We'll increase the cage extrusion to 0.03 and run this isolated frame. That looks like it fixed up the problem and didn't introduce any new ones. Frame 210 has a barely noticeable flicker on the back of the skirt, but we'd like to correct it anyway. We'll isolate that frame and again set the cage extrusion up to 0.03. On frame 230, there's another patch of color on the back of the skirt. We will isolate this frame and set the cage extrusion to 0.03. Frame 262 has a pretty substantial cross transfer from the sleeve to the back of the skirt. Taking a look at the frame using the heat map view, we can see that while it actually looks like a bad texture transfer due to the proximity of the sleeve, it's actually a result of an error from stabilization. We'll isolate this frame in the template match stage and again in texture transfer with the auto cage extrusion enabled. Select all of the intervals we adjusted and run them so we can review the changes to make sure they work for the clip. After a quick look, everything looks great. We're ready to finish compressing our clip with SSDR in the next video.